Welcome to the Executives Lounge. This is your podcast host, Christine Fawner. I am bringing you amazing stories from amazing women in leadership from across the globe. Let's get started. We are here today with Elisa Walk. She is the Chief Business Officer for Burton Snowboards, and she is responsible for revenues worldwide for Burton. She is committed to fostering Burton's lifetime relationship with consumers and promotes their love for snowboarding in the mountains worldwide. Elisa, you are speaking to my heart today, and I'm so excited to have you here. Let's talk all things Elisa and snowboards. Welcome. Thank you. So good to be here, Christine. Awesome. Well, let's start. You know, I love storytelling. That's what this podcast is all about. And I'd love for you to tell us your story about how you got where you are today. Awesome. Thank you. I'm honored. Um, I was born and raised in California, went to undergrad at USC, did grad school. I got my MBA at Pepperdine, um, thought I would be a California girl forever. Um, Started my career in telecommunications software, Then after 11 years, moved to Giant Bicycles and I hit the jackpot. Um, Yeah, that's how we met. Yes, that's how we met. (laughs) I started at that company in finance and HR. I moved up very quickly, um, taking over operations and then sales and then purchasing and then marketing. And at my four-year mark, I became general manager of Giant USA, which meant that I was in charge of of, um, running our US subsidiary. And I reported to leadership in Taiwan, which is where the company headquarters is. And I loved Giant. I loved the people. We were doing great work. I had so much respect for my CEO that I reported to. And I just really felt like we were making a difference um, I was GM there then for seven years. So I was there 11 in total when a recruiter called me. And at that time, I, I wasn't looking at all, but he got me at the right time. So it's so interesting how timing and doors that happen to open in your life, you never can exactly predict when that's going to happen. But this door opened to Burton Snowboards. And I, of course, knew the brand because I was involved in winter sports my whole life. And I knew uh, Donna Carpenter, uh, one of the founders, Uh, she and I sat on a a board together for Camber Outdoors. And I just had admired the company so much. So um, yes, I took that recruiter call and found out a little bit more about it and uh, ultimately wound up taking the job and moving from California to Vermont. And that was about seven, almost eight years ago now. So uh, I started at Burton um, as GM for the Americas. Um, after a few years of doing that, we did a lot of transitions to really establish um, the Americas as a region. I then began also overseeing Europe. And so I had uh, I promoted a GM or co-GMs from under under me for the Americas and then had a GM in Europe, did that for a little while, um, and then also took over Japan. And at that point, um, realized that my role has really evolved into overseeing, um, really sales worldwide. So, so that's what I do today. Um, as chief business officer, I do oversee all of our revenues worldwide and, um, have these GMs reporting to me. So, On the personal side, um, I have adult children. So when I moved to Vermont, uh, what was also happening and why it was a bit of the right time is because I was recently divorced and I had one kid in college and I had my second who was about to go to college. And I was looking around thinking like, I could make a change in my life. Like if if I'm going to make a change in my life, like, heck, this is the time. Um, So picked up and moved to Vermont. And when I got here, I I just absolutely fell in love with it. I love living in like the the mountain outdoors culture. Um, I met someone who I fell in love with a couple of years later. We're now married. Um, I have a stepdaughter who I just adore. Um, And so now for me, life's in Vermont. Yeah, that's amazing. 
what what was the change from California to Vermont like? Like you said, you were you, you know you for those listening and not not watching the video. I mean, we have a California girl in front of us. You have the beautiful <laughs> blonde hair, the gorgeous smile. You have the job of your dreams. What? How big of a change was that for you? It was. Well, of course, a big change, not just in climate and, you know, working through winter and um, what have you, but the people in Vermont are, are wonderful. And I, I think I just really embrace the culture out here. I love the open space. I love the outdoor culture. Um, I was just, I was ready, you know, I was, I was ready for, for new friends. Um, My kids moved out here. Um, subsequently. My son now lives in Bend, Oregon, but um, my daughter is still now out here. So that's exciting for me that like, you know, they followed me out, out to Vermont and um, we've had some great times out here together. I want to back up for a minute because you, when you first started talking about coming into the outdoor industry, you know, you were coming from telecommunications, I think is what you said into, into giant bicycles. And, you know, were you, were, I mean, you said that you've been a lifelong snowboarder, lifelong snow sport. Yeah, yeah, I was a skier before coming to Burton. Um, I have not touched my ski since I've come to Burton. I now <laughs> absolutely love snowboarding. I don't know why it took me so long. Um, but no, I was always an outdoor enthusiast. Um, before going to Giant, I was a cyclist. Um, so I was super excited about going to work for a Giant, thinking like, wow, my career can be, you know, working for this company that you know, is all about this sport that I love doing. You know, I thought, I thought it was amazing. I mean, granted, I'm a middle of the packer. I'm like, did not race bikes. I, nothing like that, but I love to finish. I don't race to win. (laughs) Yeah, no, I raced to have a good time. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. So when you came into the working in the outdoor industry versus, you know, just enjoying it, um, you know, what about what about the people and the consumers and the employees? What about them really was a draw for you? You know, you're serving a new, a whole new kind of person in, in the outdoor world. Oh, definitely. But that's my people. Like I felt like that was my tribe. So it was very easy to, to serve that customer, to understand that customer. But even the teams that I would lead, like we were very like-minded. Um, and, you know, there's just nothing like taking a meeting out on a chairlift or out on a, a bike ride or something like it just doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. I I love doing Dawn Patrol rides with you. And when we were yeah. in Deer to- Valley, right? Yeah. Deer Valley. We did a few of those. Yeah. Um, speaking of outdoors and adventure, let's talk about how adventure and outdoor experiences has influenced you as a leader and in your own career development. Awesome question, because they have both for sure enhanced my career. So it, I'd say adventure for me has largely been wrapped around travel, um, which just that in itself has instilled a lot. Like travel gives you this strong sense of independence. You know, you don't have to rely on others when you're out on the road. I did a lot of travel on my own. Like for example, I would go to Taiwan for the week for management meetings with my leadership, but then the weekend I would just take off and go to Thailand by myself or maybe Hong Kong or, you know, some places that I'd never seen before. And, you know, for for those of you who have done a lot of travel on your own, like, you know, like it teaches you a lot by being out there on your own, like just really building up that, that sense of independence and confidence. Um, travel, it's, it's taught me humility. Um, maybe it's a bit cliche, but like, it's a very big world out there with so many different cultures and thoughts and ways of behaving. And, being in these different cultures, it just gets you away from any sense of narrow-mindedness. Um, you know, you realize how small like you are <laughs> and how how big the world is and how you're not always right. You know, your perspective is one perspective and there's a lot of different thoughts out there. And I mean, from a, a true career perspective though, 
travel. I mean, I'm in an international role overseeing global business. Like I can't imagine that I would have been nearly as successful in my job or as effective in my job if I wasn't well-traveled and, and hadn't learned so much from these other cultures as well. Um, you mentioned outdoor experiences though. And for me, that manifested a lot in athletic pursuits. And I say athletic again, being a middle of the packer. Um, but to me, every year I would have some wild idea of an event or a trip or some kind of goal that pushes me physically. Like literally I, I write it on a board. Um, so like my 40th birthday, I didn't have a party. I ran a marathon. My, my 50th birthday, I actually uh, did a Spartan race with my family. Um, last year I did a 50 mile mountain bike ride with my husband and I'm talking 50 miles of Vermont single track. So not easy, really hard. Like that was, a, <laughs> it was not easy. Like that was, I had to dig very, very deep. Um, and, but each one of these, like whatever my yearly thing is going to be, I mean, every one of them I'm intimidated by, I'm super intimidated. Well, you're, um, you're, you know, you're challenging yourself to really come out of your comfort zone and do something that's hard. And it might be something that you love to do, right? Like that type two fun is like, oh, I love to mountain bike, but doing it for 50 miles sure sounds hard. <laughs> right. Right. But I mean, you're absolutely right. Like getting out of your comfort zone on a regular basis, like that's what you need as an executive in a leadership role. Like you're often in John Charter territory, you know, you're, you, you can't quit on your team. Like you're their leader. Like they need you to have that, that grit and that endurance and, you know, have your eye on like the end game. So I think it's just taught, taught me a lot, like truly building it's built up my mental game. So that does, have, you know, it helps me personally. It helps me maybe on these physical challenges, but for sure it's helped me in my career. Yeah. To get where I am. You know, I, you're making me think about, you know, how we utilize our personal experiences. You know, I always say that we're, we're a sum of our experiences, right? That we, we are who we are based on the experiences that we have. And so I'm wondering, you know, as you've had all of these really unique experiences and you've brought those into your own um, portfolio, if you will, you know, what, how, how would you describe your, your leadership to your team that you currently have, let's say, based on some of the stuff that you've learned about yourself over the years in these adventures? I am, again, I'm, I'm not, I don't win races. I love the middle of the pack and I love being part of like encouraging people to achieve their goals. So that's more on like the personal side of it. And then on the business side, like I'm a super big believer in like an, the inverted org chart where my role is to serve, you know, for me, it's primarily serving my general managers because if they're not successful running their business units, like who am I? Like, I'm not successful if they're not successful. And then my boss, the CEO, you know, maybe some people think like, oh, you serve your boss. Like, well, not really. I, I serve my GMs because to make my CEO successful, I've got to be good at really helping them to optimize and, and really just be as, you know, do the best work that they can possibly do. So um, I think what it kind of circles back to what you're asking, um, I really think that I'm a people person person i i would think um you know what some people ask me a lot is like what are your leadership strengths and and i'd say the answer to that is building teams building up teams to really achieve like more than they could have imagined you know when we first talked about having you on this podcast we talked about um your tenacity and courage to get where you are. I don't know if you remember saying that, but you had talked about it, the, the, the tenacity and the courage it takes to, to, be, to be a leader yeah. in, in difficult, uncomfortable situations to help global business grow and be successful, um, to help your teams make that happen. Um, 
you know, we also talked about your contribution and influence that you've had as a as a woman leader in a in a really male dominated industry, the outdoor yeah. sports industry. Um, how do you think that courage and tenacity served you um, to kind of help you feel a sense of belonging in that space or, or a sense of belonging in your leadership? When it comes to really having that sense of like belonging or, or like confidence in my role that the, when you have the tenacity, you don't get bothered by the little stuff because like your your eye again is on the end game and how do you get to that end game and there's going to be ups and downs along the way and I would say that earlier in my career those ups and downs were so traumatic like you know I would just get so upset and you carry the stress and what can I do and what did I do and it must be me and maybe it's just years under my belt um but I would say that the tenacity that has been built up is like that stuff just, I wouldn't say it always rolls off my back. Of course, I'm not immune to the negative comments or something like that, or, or you know, even just someone, you know, saying something that's unkind, but I bring on disagreement at this point in my career too, because I feel like I don't have all the answers. I know I don't have all the answers. And sometimes that healthy conflict is like the best thing the organization needs, or maybe it's the best thing that the team needs. Um, but, you know, a lot of times you just have to have to let the little stuff go so that, you know, you're, you're really keeping your eye on where you're going. What do you think is your biggest challenge or roadblock right now um, in, in terms of tough stuff at work? I would say really the biggest challenge is, is having too much that we want to do and not enough time to do it. So when maybe priorities differ between, you know, different team members or, or some of my colleagues, I mean, of course that's going to, you know, cause tension. Um, but yeah, you know, time is, time is just way too scarce <laughs> in life. There is way too many things that can be done that I wish we could do. So many initiatives to really move the company forward. And you you just, you know, you you, you can't do it all. And so, you know, a lot of times that that does, you know, cause tension when when you don't really mean to. Yeah. I love that you were talking about how con like conflict is good. You know, when, when I say 85% of employees experience conflict, some of that conflict could be good, right? Yeah. And when we talk about time, we have this with this finite amount of time. And so, you know, figuring out how to prioritize, I think would be always the tough part when you have these ambitious goals. Yeah. 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 I think in the role that I have also, my job is very wide. It's very, very broad. And I do work with a lot of people that their job is more narrow and deep. And so balancing that out, I just have to be really mindful of it, that I'm just going to skim the surface and not everybody is going to understand that. They're going to you know, want me down in the weeds and I have to fight to fight myself to not get there because sometimes I want to. Maybe it's human nature. <laughs> yeah, I really have to constantly remind myself of of my place, you know, and, and that I'm, I am here to support them and really serve these general managers. I'm like, absolutely knock it out of the park. Yeah, you've had a really established career now. And, you know, I, we talked about 40th birthdays and 50th birthdays and hitting these milestones in, in your personal and professional world. Um, what is, what is something that you have learned or, or that you've experienced or what is just something that you will continue doing no matter what? I would say on the professional side, I will continue going into unchartered territory. And I can't even like define exactly what that is because it's unchartered, but I do find every, maybe it's every one year, maybe it's every three years. And then maybe it's on the smaller level, it's every, you know, two months, there's there is a new path. I'm, I'm very curious. And so I'm going to keep my curiosity 
going and, and keep broadening out what I do. Um, very opposite from that on more the, the personal side of my life. I mean, I will hundred percent forever be involved in like my kids' lives and, and now they're, they're spouses too. I mean, they, they're my heart. <laughs> and without that, like I, I got nothing to give to a professional. If like, if I'm, my cup's not full, you know, first, if you will. Um, and they just bring me so much joy and inspiration and laughter. Um, they're adults now. And, you know, at least in my family is, as they've grown up, my relationship with them as adults is, it's really amazing. And they're my best friends. So I, it's not about parenting them anymore. I mean, I, I did my best <laughs> it's done, but now it's about being an example and, you know, sharing advice and, and literally, literally like learning new things together and now kind of helping out them in their careers. Not that I can help them. Like I, I, you know, they've got to, they've got to make their mistakes and they've got to, you know, crash into walls and, and things like that. Like we all did, but, um, I can be there as, as a sounding board and thought partner and, you know, help them with ideas and things like that. That sounds like the fun, like the fun stage of parenting is when you, can. it is it's so much fun. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, you know, we were talking about learning and is there a book or a podcast or a resource that, that you would like to recommend to us? That, that you think is just something we should all experience? Um, on the podcast side, other than uh, now listening to all of your amazing podcasts, I'm forever hooked on how I built this. And then also the Rich Roll podcast. Those are just my go-tos all the time. Um, on books, the I love to read and there are so many great business books out there that I wouldn't do justice by like picking one because so many of them, like, you know, they focus on like this strategy or, you know, this skill set, something. Um, so setting that aside, what I've been reading lately is much more around wellness and longevity. Um, and yes, I, I want to live a long life and I want to learn how, but what I found is that everything that I'm learning about like longevity and wellness, like it really means you're absolutely optimizing your energy now and how you feel now. And, and I feel great. Like there, are, I have had like a lot of learnings from a lot of these materials that have improved my energy level, improved my sleep, improved like, you know, just really how I perform, whether it's personally or professionally. Um, my, my go-to favorite is Younger Next Year. It's by, um, two authors, Crowley and, um, Lodge, but I also just listened to a new release called Outlive. It's by Peter Adia. And that was really good. It has like a lot of science behind it. Uh, for the listeners, we will have links available um, to the recommendations that Elisa made in the description of the podcast. So don't worry, you don't have to log off now and go find it. We'll we'll get those for you. And um, Elisa, is there something that you wish I would have asked you that I haven't or something that we should know about you? I know you love your kids and that's a big part of your life. And I love that you shared that. Is there anything else that Maybe we should know about you before we end our time together today. You didn't ask me about my party planning skills. So I am known for my killer scavenger hunts. My husband and I, we live in the woods and we built about, um, about two miles of mountain bike trails that go around the perimeter of our land. And we have features like we've got some drops and rock rollers and some jumps. And, and then we have trail names for like each sort of different section of our woods. So when I make a scavenger hunt, like I'm able to send people like running through the woods with some riddle about one of the trail names. And when they get there, they've got to do like, I don't know, shot a fireball or they've got to go down to the brook where they have to build something and take a photo or whatever. Um, my most epic one I created with my assistant, there was 60 people which included all of Burton's regional leadership and like 20 of our professional athletes. So these are people like hucking out of half pipes and jumping off of insane cliffs into like huge powder 
for a living. So the intensity level was just through the roof. And I in competition and send them like on all these little scavenger hunt things. And they probably ran at least three miles. They came back, they were sweating, they were laughing. They had so many stories. They, they might've been a little drunk um, by the time they came back um, based on the clues we left in the woods. <laughs> but um, yeah, my favorite scavenger hunts though, and, and really what started it all were the ones I, I do with my family. Um, we have just great memories. We've, we've done them in the winter and had like, you know, in the snow, tubing and, and different things like that. So we, we get kind of, kind of crazy. It's fun. Um, my little outlet. I did not know about you. <laughs> fun fact, yes. Yeah, fun fact. I'm going to have to tap into that knowledge uh, <laughs> next time I want to do a scavenger hunt. I could not do it to your level, I don't think, but I can at least aspire. <laughs> I've got some practice now. So I'm like really like they're getting better and better. Awesome. Well, Elisa, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story with us. We really awesome. appreciate it. And well, I can't wait for next time. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today in the Executives Lounge, where we bust open the doors, slam through the ceilings, and make sure that we have a spot at the table and that we are the lounge. I am Christine Fauner, your executive leadership expert, continuously looking for those executive leaders that seek community, continuous learning, and have a desire to find the next adventure. Join us next time. Join our Facebook group, Roam Your Soul. And you can also find us on Instagram, at Roam Your Soul. And don't forget to check out the website for upcoming adventures, www.roamyoursoul.com. And if you're looking for that next executive level leadership coach, you can find me at roamyoursoul.com slash Christine Fawner Coaching.